Hey, what you're about to see is an excerpt taken out of a one-hour Muay Thai library session with Kem at Kem Muay Thai Gym in the mountains of Khao Yai Tiang. If you come to Thailand, I highly recommend you train with Kem at his gym. He's absolutely amazing. He can take any kind of style. He can work with anyone, any level. Everyone is welcome, and it's a really positive experience. So uh, you get a taste of it in this little clip here, and I highly recommend you check out Kem's gym. From you. So if you're kicking their legs early in the fight, you're slowing them down gradually as the fight wears on, and you're using kind of a mid-range weapon that's not the knees that everyone is anticipating. So you're doing damage and catching people off guard a little bit. So the reason he's excited about that elbow is that I'm actually bringing my full body behind it. So it's very powerful and short. <laughs> so he's saying when you rush your mua, so take your time, be very like chai yin yin, see your shots, make space between all of your shots, make them very legible and beautiful. The beauty of a technique is not necessarily that you like executed it perfectly, like, oh, the little turn on the hip. A lot of times it's having enough space around it that you can actually read that technique as what it is. It doesn't get lost in everything else that you're doing. So here he's showing again how to come inside someone's knee. It's the same thing as like slipping a punch. He's slipping the knee and coming right up the middle to land that elbow. Same thing as when you're clinching. Diesel Noy teaches how to like slip your body left and right in order to get away from knees. Same thing. <laughs> He's saying when you get very tense, you get heavy and he knows what your shape is and he can trip you very easily. So you want to stay loose even when you're being strong. You don't want to be tense because tense is very um, immobile and stiff. So you really need to use your hip on those elbows to like the rotation is really where all of that power comes from. It's not up like this, that's like an arm elbow. He's actually keeping it one piece and pulling his whole hip through. So he's making a point here about being long. If you're gonna be jabbing or keeping your hand in someone's face, it's soft, like it's light. If you make your arm very tense and very long, you've made a boom by which someone can just kind of move you around. So you want to kind of make it temporary, you want to reach out with it. No guard should be inflexible. Every guard needs to be very flexible and plastic and move and change all the time. So if I'm going to keep my arm out, I'm not doing myself any favors. I want it to be very plastic and short and feeling, like a little antenna. So he makes this point several times about how when you push against someone, the first time you touch, you're just checking. You push the first time. But then you don't want to have continuous pushing because then when they move their weight, you're going to fall forward, which you can then do to your opponent if they're going to push their weight on you too. You don't want continuous pressure. You want touching, like feeling temporary little checks. So I'm jabbing, which is short range, and then he's coming after me with a teep. I just need to anticipate and control that distance. I'm just getting out of the way, but then closing that space again right away. A lot of what he uses his fakes for, which is different from how Karahat uses his fakes, Karahat fakes either in order to force the opponent into a particular position that he can anticipate and now he knows what moves you have, or he fakes the time on the weapon that he's going to throw. He throws it at the moment you don't think it's going to come. The way Kem uses fakes, and he uses it very, very well and very consistently, is to change distance. He fakes in order to change distance very quickly. 
So here's that thing again. The first time we touch guards like this, I'm just checking. I'm just feeling how much he's going to push on me. And then you push off and you start again. And see how he pulls his hands back. He's like, I know you're going to push against me. He pulls his guard back and then throws a very short chon weapon. Everything with, everything with him is very hot plate. You don't like leave anything on for a long time. Everything is very just like touch and check, push and then pull. Like you want to kind of be unpredictable in the way that they can't feel what you're doing. If you do the same thing over and over again or you add consistent pressure to things, people can feel where you are. His invisibility cloak is that everything is just kind of hot plate touching. See how his head is going over his foot there? That's why he's losing balance. See his beautiful head alignment. He keeps his head right over his hips and over his knee all the time. So even if he whips it, even if he misses on his long punch, he's not going to fall forward. I goom. In Thai, this is called goom. It's where you kind of like hunch. He keeps the chest open all the time so that his head is properly aligned. By gooming, sometimes, you're, sometimes your head goes too far forward. You can stay very tucked. Samson Asan does this, and he keeps his head alignment very nice. But for Kem, he keeps his root by having his chest up. When people start doing their little, like, Sanchai shuffle on you, just teach them. Kem fought Sanchai a couple of times. He, he beat him once and lost to him two, I think. So you can see how just by the pace and the rhythm of his pad work, my weapons have had the opportunity to get more space around them, like he's talking about. I felt myself that I was taking too many steps, and so I stopped and laughed. Like, I self-assessed that this is just too many steps. Everything should be very kind of, like, uh, concise and... Uh, decisive. So keeping my head over my knee, over my hip, so I'm not falling off of those strikes even though I'm throwing my full body into them. Deep. So you can see at times after I've used my front side to kind of control the space between us, he wants me to then throw my backside as this kind of like finishing shot. I've done all this work to get him against the ropes. And then once I actually have him there and I am throwing my right hand, I'm not throwing it as a finishing move. Like I'm not feeling the moment at which this is the like culmination of the work that I've been doing up until this point. Nice little push there. That push works more if I'm tense. So if I had popped off of him, he might have fallen forward there. What's really nice about working with Kem is that he is giving you like constant instruction. He is giving you like continuous uh, verbal technique, but also like making you physically feel what he's talking about. But it doesn't give you the concentration fatigue that I think a lot of other instruction that's like very nitpicky can give you concentration fatigue. He's giving you very few things to focus on all the time, but they're simple enough and you can feel them enough that you're just kind of doing this repetitive in the flow of things work. Here he's making a point about <laughs> how if you don't have your guard up and you're covering all these uh, distances quickly, you're gonna like chawn into someone's elbow. So this is why you wanna control your body all the time is that you're not falling into anybody. So I'm understanding his point about kicking the opponent's legs is that this is going to slow them down. You're going to put them in quicksand for the later rounds, which is great when you're trying to go in and uh, finish someone with knees or any kind of close weapon later in a fight. Nice. So he's just doing his little like distance checks with me, that lunge forward to seeing whether I'm going to like dok jai or whether I'm going to like sway and move with his change of distance. Come on. Come on. Ah. 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 
So he's holding it at his chest, which is my chin. So, so even though he's holding it very low, that's for an opponent my size, like right into their chin. I really like this. So what he's saying is you actually fake grabbing the opponent in the clinch. So he's being me. You fake grabbing them in the clinch. And if they're tight, if their guard is tight, you change and throw an elbow on that same side. It is. You do not anticipate that at all. It's very scary. So when I'm checking, like when I'm grabbing for the clinch, if he's loose and I can grab him, I just actually grab him. If he's too tight for me to grab him, he's locked me out, that's when you throw the elbow because their whole side is tight against you. And so they're not going to be able to have the flexibility to guard against that elbow. And see how he makes space for it. He's pulling his leg back the same way you would for like a knee in the clinch, but he's going to throw the elbow instead. But again, this is changing course based on what your opponent does. So if I go to grab him and he's loose, grab him. If I go to grab him and he's tight, that means that entire side of his body is tight and he cannot protect against that elbow. Yeah, That's really clever. So he's saying if he as my corner starts yelling, Sylvie, go, 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 that means I'm going to come forward and start grabbing her to clinch. My opponent's going to hear him yelling from the corner as well. She's like, Sylvie's coming at me. I'm going to definitely fucking protect myself from Sylvie coming to grab me. And so I know she's going to be tight and I can throw that elbow. This is like masterful mind game on Kem's part. He's talking about how you as the corner yelling at your fighter to do something is letting the opponent know what you want them to do. And then I as the fighter know that they know what I want to do and I have the secondary solve to them trying to defend against what my corner is yelling for. This is like super chess. Like this is very, very masterful mind games here. So see how he's tight here. I cannot grab his neck. There's no way because he's blocked it off. So instead I go inside it. It's the same thing of slipping inside the knee in order to land that elbow. I'm coming inside his guard to land that elbow. A guard I created by trying to grab him in the clinch. So he really wants me to pivot my body here. See, see the flex in his legs, that bowing? That's where you get your power from. But he's not stepping too far outside of me because then he can't come inside my guard. It's very like straightforward, the same way you would grab in the clinch. Ooh. See how he's holding that really tight? And then the knee is there. Like you have this progression. <laughs> so he's saying he, as my corner, is yelling Sylvie, knee. And when I hear him yelling knee, my opponent knows I'm going to try to knee. And so I have to guess knee because he's yelling me to do that, but also have solves to the opponent knowing this, which is punching instead or punching on the way into knee or checking with this guard. <laughs> Very good. He's a very good corner. He has a very, very nice energy in the corner. So he's like, if she's going to guard real tight because she knows that you're coming to clinch her, then you teep and you leg kick. Like basically you find alternatives on your way towards the thing that he's calling for from the corner, which you should be doing anyway. Long Salon was in my corner once and he just... Long Swan is a knee fighter, a thousand percent. He just laid into me about how I wasn't teeping first on my way in. <laughs> this is like, don't be a dumb Muay Cow fighter. He's talking about how everyone knows you want a knee. And so you get to your knees through these alternate pathways of other weapons that are hurting your opponent on the way or in or catching them off guard so that your knee then catches them off guard. 
He's saying have more ideas. This is basically what I'm just saying about like having alternate plans and alternate pathways towards what you're ultimately trying to get to. So he's faking a kick, sort of. He's faking it with the rotation of his hip as he's stepping forward, but he's ultimately just switching stance. See that? So he gets me blocking first. He gets me on one foot by having me block his leg.